preseason week two is in the books, and this is where there's not conjecture, there's not just debate about what people think. This is what's happening on the field, and we're going to walk you through these games, tell you what you need to pay attention to, what you need to react to, and what you need to not overreact to. Make sure you like, you subscribe, and enjoy the show. Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And guys, look at your wedding ring right now. Is it fun? Is it boring? Were you like me? Did you go into the shop and go, ah, I'll take it. I'll take that one. That's not the right way to do it, and Manly Bands is going to help you upgrade your game. They, they have incredible rings, and they're going to get you – they have you covered from all aspects. They get you started with the, the Manly Ring Sizer to figure out your size, and once you know that, that is the fun part. They have incredible materials like gold. Get to the dinosaur bone. I will get the gold, wood. you got to build anticipation. I'm sorry. Gold, wood. Antler, steel, dinosaur. There bar, it is. Media rights. They even, they have a a curated collection of Jack Daniel's whiskey barrel made rings. They have awesome things. It's it's time to take your ring, upgrade it. No more of that. I didn't think about this at all. It's it should have your personality reflected in it. And right now you can order your Manly Band and you're going to get twenty one percent off plus a free silicone ring if you go to manlybands.com slash footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers. The code is footballers. You're going to get 21% off. Manly Bands, the best rings, period. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, August 23rd, we're back. Whether you like it or not. I like it. I think there's a little... There's some extra going on in this room this morning. I'm in a good mood. Some electricity. I'm excited. This is a fun time of year. We were having... Fun with the producers before the show. We've got well, our I mean, coffee. Fun, fun yeah. for us. I don't know if it was fun for the producers themselves. Jason, at many points throughout this show, will probably end up with a milk mustache of some kind. Why are is you? Is it a milk mustache? It's a are chai tea latte. cookies with milk? Oh, okay. It's a chai tea latte, so <laughs> I don't know that it's a milk mustache. I'm not sure why you decided that a real foamy coffee, when you're, when you're recording uh, the number one YouTube fantasy football show is appropriate two reasons so reason number one delicious reason number two <laughs> that's a good one that's yeah, reason that's, number two that, isn't that, it? that is also reason number two <laughs> delicious we have a great show we've had you know a number of preseason games we're going to talk about fantasy news to get into mailbag questions to answer and an announcement for everyone oh, it's a big one <laughs> it's a big one oh. people have been asking the mega the Megalobol. The Megalobol is here, people. If you're listening for the first time, you just found us this year, and you're like, what is happening with their voices? <laughs> the Megalodon. The Megalobol. Well, the Megalodon has to come up out of the water oh, after that true. music. That's true. Is about to swallow us all up. The Megalobol, the world's largest fantasy league, is here. You can that, join. That we know of. I, I have asked for years for any example of a league anywhere near this size and i have never found it so i establish it uh i, I decree it as the largest in the in the <laughs> land here's the deal uh we have contacted i declare, <laughs> I declare bankruptcy <laughs> i uh we have contacted uh the listener league uh participants and reached out mm -hmm. thank you for all your submissions it was always humbling and amazing um if you did not uh make it into the listener league don't worry Almost none of you did. Um, however, <laughs> statistically speaking, statistically yeah. speaking, however, all of you have a chance. The winner of the Megla Bowl is automatically in the Listener League. This is where you can really prove to us, to the other Foot Clan members, to everyone that you could play. Go to MegalaBowl.com. For everybody who is a, a, a supporter at Join the Foot, 
you are automatically able to sign up. You just go to megalobowl.com, and I would I would bookmark that because all the rules, all the frequently asked questions, the how-tos, and as the season goes on, the rankings and all that, it will always be updated at megalobowl.com. So if you want to play with us, and I'm I'm playing this year. I'm in one of these leagues already. I'm not telling you what time slot, uh, but we will uh, we will have that running. You could go to megalobowl.com right now, sign up for one of the four time slots. We have an international we have an international time slot. Oh, sure. Uh, four days, the 5th, the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th of September. So pick a slot that is right for you. Make sure when you you sign in, use your sleeper uh, account ID um, that, that you already have, like log in, and uh, then you could join rather easily. Pick a time slot. It's and- so fun. And it, it, last year we had over 8,700 people in the Megla Bowl. One came out on top. They're in this year's Listener League. It is so fun. I'd like to... I'm going to throw this out there. I'd like to have 10,000 people in the Megalo Bowl. Oh, this my year. goodness. And wouldn't that just be kind of like the bullet point of your life if you won a 10,000 person tournament? Wouldn't yeah. they talk about that at your own funeral? Like, wouldn't your family talk about the time that you won the Megalo Bowl? Yeah, probably. Like, a- and maybe, you, maybe. You know, at the end, you're like, hey. Remember that time I won the Megalo Bowl? When they're there like, were 10,000 like, people. Like, Dad, yeah, but what about us? Like, yeah, but. That you're, was cool, right? Not, I'm talking about my greatest achievement. <laughs> That's not you. So, like, like Jason just said, away in the chair. Like Jason said, megalobowl.com with all the information. If you already support it, jointhefoot.com. There's a post that's up there with your entry link, so you can jump in. And uh, another reminder: use your existing Sleeper account. Sleeper hosts the entire tournament. Uh, they do a great job with it. Uh, but you want to be. You want to have it integrated with your existing account. And, and these are normal 12-team leagues. Uh, you might, you're might you not in like one 10,000. Uh, the yeah, the look, players go real deep in there. If you're drafting out of the 311 spot. Oh, that's, that's a tough spot You might year. not even get a player. No, they're 12-team leagues, and then towards the end of the year, we start you know in the playoffs, we do it by points, and it's all transparent and out in front of your face on megalobowl.com. It's, it's a good time. All right, so that announcement is out of the way. A reminder, you can head to ultimatedraftkid.com, get the UDK, get ready for your draft. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, and let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Now, Jason, do you want to grab uh, like a milkshake or something before I get into the news? I would <laughs> really love wake up. a milkshake. I mean... I think it would really help the the old vocal cords. It makes for good radio if you're uh, flimmy. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, okay, we're gonna get into injury news. Some pretty important storylines there, and then all of the preseason takeaways will come after that. This is one of the <laughs> one of the bigger ones. Uh, Chiefs running back Clyde edwards alaire Oh, Suffered an ankle sprain in week two of preseason. To be clear, I am not laughing at the injury. That is unfortunate. You're you're laughing at final Desta Jason. <laughs> I am laughing at final Desta Jason, who this summer has stolen the sickle from my hand yes. and run wild through the forest. I mean, when I love no, a guy, no wheat when, can stand up to your sight. No, when when I love a player, they have not been healthy um and what's great about this is not only on friday did i declare clyde edwards alaire um my my guy but then in our family league a few hours later i drafted clyde edwards alaire in the middle yes. of the second happily proudly uh and then and then that evening so, he got injured if you're just hearing about this for the first time he still has a chance to be ready for week one depending on the severity of the ankle injury early indications are that it's not a high ankle sprain but we're still waiting for information on whether it's a grade one or two sprain, which could mean two to three weeks for a grade one where he's ready for week one or a grade two sprain. Or you have Michael Thomas from last year. Yeah, right, it's an because, interior ankle injury. Right. The, the inside of the leg is, is a much more difficult part of, you know, when you, when you injure the inside ankle, it is a longer recovery time. However, based on the play itself and the verbiage being used about how it's minor, I would be surprised if this turns out to be a higher grade sprain, um, but it certainly could, you know, I- either he he is there in week one and gets off to a slow start potentially, or, you know, because it's preseason, they don't have to be honest. They can say whatever they want about Are these Are you injuries. taking him at his current ADP? 
Um, at his current ADP at that 2-3 turn, yes. Okay. Now, where I took him uh, on Friday, w which was much earlier in the second, there were other players I would have pivoted to, like a, like a Joe Mixon. If I'm staring them down right now, I'll take the one that's not currently injured. What's unfortunate is last year he dealt with an injury as well heading into the playoffs. He didn't come back until, I think, the second game of the playoffs. And you hate to see that with someone you want to be a workhorse running back mm -hmm. because the team makes plans to not have you if you get hurt a lot. It doesn't mean he couldn't you know, handle it. It's just the team brings other players in. You know, you have uh, Daryl Williams, you have Jarek McKinnon. So Yeah, those guys are now – I, I mean, we're very much in limbo. We have no idea if Clyde's going to miss week one or not. But both of those running backs were, you know, really undrafted types of players. And now at the very end, grabbing Daryl Williams or drafting Jack McKinnon is not that bad of an idea. Draft them, wait on the injury news, and either you have a now have a player who has increased value or you just drop them and grab someone off the waivers. All right, A.J. Brown. Injury news on him this morning, continued in injury news. He had missed a practice. I think that was the last thing we reported. Expected to be ready to start the season, despite a knee injury that recently had him sidelined during practices. If you remember, A.J. Brown dealt with an yes. injury in, in the beginning of his rookie year, right? Or mm -hmm. was it the beginning of last year? But he was injured Both. last year. Oh, and, great. <laughs> and last year was the one where they were they, the team had talked to him about shutting it down for right, the year and right. he said no I'm going to rehab and then I'll get the cleanup after the season is done so that <sighs> it's not great no it's not let me ask you this you're on the clock right now and AJ Brown is there or Justin Jefferson Keenan Allen Terry McLaurin are you are you taking those type of players over AJ Brown because of the potential knee problems I mean Jeff? I have them all ranked ahead yes. of AJ Brown anyways yeah. so yes uh there's variables with Julio's arrival anyway so those players are all quality enough to be taken ahead of him. Yeah, Jefferson, Keenan Allen, DK Metcalf, Allen Robinson. I have those guys already projected ahead of so, A.J. Brown. Are, is there a lower tier of names you could bring up there for people drafting? Like, uh, Mike Evans, CeeDee Lamb. You got the, the tried and true, very, you know, the, the, the vet who has always done it in Mike Evans and then the new hotness at CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb's a tough one. I mean, I think I would take him ahead of A.J. Brown. I would as well. All right, Adam Thielen suffered a thigh bruise in the preseason game. I don't think that's going to be concerning with the season 20 days away. Dak has had no setbacks. Okay. Remains on track to start September 9th against the Buccaneers. All Zeke, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, C.D. Lamb, Blake Jarwin. Fans rejoice <laughs> with that news. This was uh, impressive. Carson Wentz is back at practice. I saw videos of him this morning. Like The headline here is that Carson Wentz is healthy. Because you got 20 days till the season begins. He's going to be their starting quarterback. It I've, looks I've, like it. I've projected him for 17 weeks, which is a normal full season projection. That's not a normal Carson Wentz projection. That's though. fair, but um, I think he's going to be under center. I mean, I, I saw video of him running today, and he looked great. Yeah, with with 20 days to heal, I mean, I it's certainly not out of the question that he's not there for week one, but the t remember the injury timeline was 5 to 12 weeks. So it was like 5 to more than double that. And he's not going to be on the high end side. This this looks like he'll be ready, probably week one. But if not, sooner soon. than yeah. But all of the adjustments that were made or hesitations that existed around Michael Pittman breakout, Paris Campbell's return, T. Y. Hilton or Moali Cox or even Jonathan Taylor got adjusted in a lot of rankings due to hesitation around the quarterback position. Um, are those just kind of, are we just going back in time? Uh, I th I think for the most part, yeah. I mean, you still have Quentin Nelson's injury and the fact that they're you know uh, he's coming back from this, and so I would imagine you're not going to be just at a hundred percent week one. That being said, I, I you know Michael Pittman is an is an extreme value for where he's going because he's not going in those middle rounds. He's a very late mm -hmm. round pick now because of this injury, and he has all the opportunity in the world to break out. So where he's going, I I love his value. And they have their version of Tim Patrick as well on that roster. Zach Pascal. Zach Pascal. Jalen Hurts returned to full practice on Sunday after missing Thursday's game with an illness. That's good. Trey Sermon didn't play in week two, has a minor ankle injury. So you saw, what, Wayne Gallman out there? Yeah. And uh, you didn't, you know, Mostert has been out at practice, but he's not been in the games. So, okay. I mean. Just something to be aware of. Another ankle injury. Um Raheem Mostert to me is still 
a very good value. I I, I know that you the, need to say that, not me. Sure, I'm. That's important. I feel like I just did, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Raheem Mostert to me is a very good value. Uh, he's a one of those you know middle later round picks that is the starter, and for you know who's going to lead the NFC in rushing, the Niners. Who's going to be the number one running back? Raheem Mostert. Like, he's not going to be a, an 18, 19, 20 touch guy, but he doesn't need to be. If he touches the ball 12, 13 times a game, he's going to be good for fantasy. As long as he's healthy, he'll be good. Correct. So, I mean, uh, I'm with you. And where he's going in drafts, I believe I took him in it, our it family is, league. It is very late. And it's like my choice there was like you could go Mostert or James Robinson at that point in the draft. I. Just seems like the cost is there um, so low. All right, Jalen Waddle briefly left the game due to a leg injury. Later yeah, he returned. Waddled away. He oh, waddled, waddled back in though. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he got his grapes. Will Fuller, uh, lower body body injury. <laughs> you could just say bodily injury. Um, Will Fuller bodily injury. That's they said he'll be he healthy does. to start the season. They won't need him then because he's suspended. So week two. Should see the debut of Will Fuller with Tua, who I think has looked really good. He's looked excellent. And then Emmanuel Sanders has been in and out of practice with a foot injury. This one is – so I, I saw this several weeks ago um, when I was uh, adjusting some rankings, and it, it just seemed mild, like not news that we brought up on the show. Um, but he was in and out – This was, I'm talking like two, three weeks ago with this foot problem, and now if that's still continuing, it's, it's certainly – like I had him – firmly as the you know that second wide re receiver but now Cole Beasley and and um you know Gabe Davis. even Gabriel Davis they they're looking better if Emmanuel Sanders at this age is just dealing with a nagging foot injury all right we're going to talk about our thoughts from the preseason games takeaways this is such an important time of year it really 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 is because you know you spend the entire offseason talking about what you think will happen but players weren't practicing players weren't in games you don't want to overreact, but you do want to react. You want to stay water. You want to take it all in and make you know, the proper adjustments to your rankings, to the way you see the world, so to speak. Like, I feel like this is like a movie, a blockbuster movie that's been anticipated, and you've seen the trailers, and everybody hi has hypothesis, or what would you call the plural of that? Hypotheses? That's that uh, correct. A hypothi. A hypothi yeah. of what the plot's going to be, but nobody's seen the movie, right? And once you see the movie, you've got to make adjustments. Um, so we're going to get into that. We want to thank Sleeper for the news and notes segment. They just released their new web app. Um, we just made some suggestions to them. They are so quick on upgrading the platform to fit and meet the needs of fantasy players. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've, they've added uh, 21 new things to their web app, including auction leagues, matchmaking, iPad use, so make the switch to Sleeper. Check them out. Preseason time. Preseason power up. Oh, baby. All right. Week two action. Almost complete. Now, we have a game tonight, right? And it seems like it's an important game. It does. Uh, according to Nick Underhill, uh, Sean Payton said he wants to declare a starter um, this next week. And so this this game here between Jameis, it's it's really, a here's the matchup tonight. It's Jameis Winston versus Taysom Hill. Uh, that's what I'm seeing. Jameis Winston's going to get the start tonight, and um, they're playing for that job. If I know anything about Jameis Winston, which I think I do, Pressure's gonna be <laughs> very yeah, interesting. Let's, let's see what the see if the young man I, if he steps up tonight, he yeah. deserves the job because uh it's all on the line and that'll be a fun one to watch. Uh who do they play tonight? The Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh yeah. Yeah, we get to see we get to see more of Sir Lawrence. Yeah, that'd be great. So um not necessarily gonna cover every game. I just wanna hit the the high points, the meaningful takeaways, things that we think will impact drafts i mean most drafts are taking place from you know i guess now through uh, labor Couple day weeks. weekend yeah. yeah so let's start here at the quarterback position let's start with trey lance um it was an up and down performance i watched this thing eight for 14 102 yards two touchdowns couple of throws that jimmy garoppolo would never make and couldn't make um had a couple of throws that were one was intercepted that maybe sanu could have 
saved him from an interception, and then he had another ball that should have been intercepted and right. that wasn't. Some of the hesitation you saw in the pocket uh, trying to make things happen, but overall still impressed with Trey Lance. Still, I'm getting to the point where I don't think it's logical for the 49ers to go with Jimmy Garoppolo. I know that they've said they will, but I just don't, I think the upside for this team in such a difficult division exists entirely in Trey Lance's hands. I think that's exactly why they went out and they drafted him. And and on and like you can look at the the Trey Lance's overall completion numbers, not very impressive, but also factor in it's he has the preseason lead of his wide receivers have dropped seven passes. I mean, he. Maybe he that's on Lance, and he needs to take some of that heat off of uh, some of these passes because because he throws an absolute laser beam. It uh, reminds me of when Cam Newton came into the league, yeah, and it was ricocheting off of everyone's hands except for, of course, the Hall of Famer Calvin Benjamin. <laughs> of, of course, <laughs> uh, so it, maybe that needs to be part of his game. But uh, it, I I stick with sooner than later, Trey Lance will be the starting quarterback. Yeah, I'm I'm coming around, Mike, and that's it's meaningful. I mean, we're in the middle of a uh, slow draft in one of our leagues, right. and I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm taking Trey Lance with my next How pick. You, well, oh. I mean, it's our family league, so I don't know if I could talk my son into Trey Lance. Anyways. Well, you already have Josh Allen. Yeah. So yeah, I, I and went, he still, I knew you still would take him. That's why I'm not letting him go. <laughs> I'm not letting him go through the eighth round because I know you would okay. still take him. I'm gonna draft him right now. You better hurry up. <laughs> I know. Uh, so I want to talk about Zach Wilson though, because yes. the Jets, uh, they get like a maybe a disservice done to them in fantasy circles because to be the, fair they've done a disservice to us that's fair the fantasy community the world our eyeballs football fans jets fans jets. <laughs> they know yeah if there are two fan bases that know what we're yeah. talking detroit and the jets yeah, they like, know yeah but, they, but we want good things for you guys but jets fans uh, we're gonna say something nice we are, and uh, I was a fan. Of, you guys remember from the off season? I was a fan yes. of Zach Wilson on film. Yes. Yesterday's performance, he was nine for eleven, one hundred twenty-eight yards, two touchdowns against Green Bay. But what stood out to me wasn't the stat line at all. It was my eye, what I saw, and what I saw was a player that reminded of me of what I loved about Josh Allen when he was a rookie. All of the you know coarse edges and refinements that need to be made, sure. He's going to have his growing pains. He's going to throw interceptions. He's going to get sacked because he tries to extend the play too long. But holy crap, the arm talent for Zach Wilson is insane. Yeah. Uh, he made throws from Mahomes-esque type of throws in this game. You know, even Aaron Rodgers says he was impressed with the performance. Corey Davis oh. stood up as a number one in this performance as well. He was targeted on a 10 of 13 routes. Yeah, Corey Davis has in the last two games has uh gone up tremendously. He he has gone from like it, when we've been doing mock drafts, you know, it's well Corey Davis is there and he's the last remaining potential number one wide receiver on his team and it was like I like I don't know, man. You Corey Davis, we have such little real production from him back at Tennessee when he was, I mean, the number one or a, a top 10 draft pick didn't really do much. Finally had a breakout, but I'm in, man. I, I think that Corey Davis, his ADP will rise uh, from where he was, which was ludicrously low. So he's still going to be a value wherever he ends up. He, in the ADP. he was, he was the wide receiver 47 and we all have him ranked 25, 27 and 37. So well above that marker. And I, I I just simply echo what you guys are saying. The 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 eyeball test in preseason has been very good for Zach Wilson. The the speed and zip on the balls and some of the things like I was watching this video, uh, you know, showing how he's looking safeties off and doing some just really good stuff. So I I am uh, warming up to Zach Wilson and unlike Trey Lance, unlike Justin Fields, he's he's the, a, he's yep. the starter week one. Yeah, like we know that for for a fact. Andy, let me – Corey Davis question for you. Yeah. Because uh, you do have him ranked the highest. <clears throat> How are you handling late in drafts? Are you – like, how does this make you feel about Elijah Moore, the the rookie wide receiver for the Jets? He's been out because he's been dealing with an injury, but before that was – I think Elijah Moore has kind of been the, the training camp hero of the most hype we've seen on Twitter. But Corey Davis is the actual number one with production in the NFL – where are you going after Corey Davis? Are you bypassing so that you can grab uh, that you can draft 
Elijah Moore no, it, later? It's Corey Davis. Okay. Uh, they paid him the money. He's more um, proven at the NFL level. And the, the reality is, is we've taken him in multiple mock drafts this offseason, but grudgingly. It's an emotional hurdle to take Corey Davis and to, and to lean on him. But Zach Wilson looks like he's going to have games. Maybe not every game, but he's going to have his games, and he's going to look to Corey Davis, and they paid Corey Davis to come in and be an alpha. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the potential. Like, I'm getting comfortable with him as a two, like a wide receiver two for my team at this wow. point. Yeah, Zach Wilson has not done enough to where I'm drafting Zach Wilson um, as, as, a, as a rookie quarterback for fantasy, but he has definitely done enough to where I'm drafting Corey Davis with more confidence, especially the hyper-targeting. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, young man. Target one wide receiver. Do that yes. for us. All right, before we get to the important Teddy Bridgewater versus Drew Locke conversation, want to thank our sponsors today, and Keeps is helping the Foot Clan keeps their hair. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. More than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. They have convenient virtual doctor consultations, medications delivered straight to your door every three months, and it's a low cost. Treatments start at just $10 a month, and Keeps offers the generic versions with discreet packaging and proven results, a ton of five-star reviews, more than any of its competitors. But treatments could take four to six months, so act fast. Prevention is key. If you're ready to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash footballers to make sure that you keeps that hair. Nice. And we want to thank DirecTV for supporting the show. You, we know what you want. You want football. And not just a game or two. You want all the games live and, well, maybe you can't get DirecTV where you live. No problem. You can stream it. You can stream Sunday Ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required, like having a front row seat to every live out-of-market game. We've leaned on, you know, we love Sunday Ticket. We've used it for years and years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've seen our studio set up. And NFL Sunday Ticket TV lets you follow your favorite team no matter where you live. Every out-of-market game, like I said, you got shortcuts in the app. See replays of entire games in less than 30 minutes. Through the NFL Sunday Ticket app, you got Player Tracker, you know, for fantasy football, so you can keep track of what's going on with your favorite names. You go online to NFL Sunday Ticket TV slash Sunday Ready now to see if you're eligible. Use the promo code Ballers twenty twenty one at checkout to save fifteen percent. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package. Go to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. All right. Broncos quarterback battle continues. Teddy Bridgewater got the opportunity to start this one and was outstanding um, numbers-wise. I mean, great passer rating, came out, did the job, hit Hamler on a touchdown, Converted a fourth down. Hit Jerry Judy in stride across the field where it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so Jerry was surprised. He's like, wait, what? I can I can get the ball right where I'm running? That's great. But let's be realistic here because whether it's Teddy or Drew, and we don't know when they'll declare a starter. Maybe they'll take the Sean Payton approach and do it sooner than later. I mean, this was a – Teddy was better in this game. I think Drew Locke was better in the last game. Um but Teddy, so far, four possessions in the preseason, three touchdowns and a field goal, has weapons. Does this matter to you? It Does it matter in a real way in terms of how you're drafting Judy, Sutton, Fant, and company? Because if it doesn't... It does matter to me with Jerry Judy. I, I don't think that Jerry Judy can't break out with one and will break out with the other or some astronomically wide gap that where I, someone's on or off my board. But I do think that the style of play that Teddy Bridgewater has matches Jerry Judy fantastically. It's it's what I just said. It's a hit and stride on these slants across the field. He, he, Teddy Bridgewater's accuracy is far better than Drew Locke's. Think about Jerry Judy's rookie season. He was always open. Well, Andy, you've brought this up many times. He had, I, I, I believe, the lowest or the, the highest lower. amount yes. of... Second, behind yeah. A.J. Green, of pass, uh, catchable passes. Yeah, of, of uncatchable passes, and, and that was Drew Locke. So that's the difference to me. If, if, if Jerry Judy is getting open... 
and not able to catch the ball because it's not put on him, um, that's not good for fantasy. You want to be able to catch the ball. So he's the one player where if if they came out tomorrow and said Teddy Bridgewater's the starter, because I have, based on last week, I actually finally, I, I held off the whole offseason, but last week I changed and made Drew Locke the starter. Uh, so if they were to come out and declare Bridgewater the starter, I would be moving Jerry Judy up. Okay. Let's talk about some running backs. Let's talk about Najee Harris. Uh, he had a huge 46-yard rumbling uh, kind of surprise speed on the edge reception where it didn't look like it was going anywhere, and then all of a sudden he breaks down the sideline. I and love he, it. I mean, he stiff-armed a guy. Uh, I think broke another tackle. Managed to juke the safety who was like ten yards away from him. It was it was an outstanding catch and run. The, I think the headline for me on on why Najee's an R, uh, an RB one for me now. He's he's at twelve, and part of that has to do with how fluid the new offense is in Pittsburgh. Big Ben looks great. Ben looks, yes, thank the you. offense thank looks you. great. So I think we should talk about it holistically here with Pittsburgh. But everything looks great in Pittsburgh right now. We know the defense is going to be good. And um, Najee's going to be the linchpin in the backfield. So it's just math. I mean, he's a talented first-round running back on a team that the offense is looking good and Big Ben looks good. They you, Mike Tomlin utilizes a three-down running back. And it's like on just pure volume alone, Najee Harris should be drafted as a running back one. Then build an upside of, what if he's actually the player that the Steelers believe he is and and drafted him in the first round? Yes, the offensive line stinks. I get it. But the volume is going to be incredible. Big Ben's arm looked lively. Now, that's just one preseason game, but that throw, that 40-air-yard uh, throw to Deontay looked pretty solid. The touchdown uh, uh, passes were very strong to Pat Fryermuth, the new <laughs> new rookie tight end is catching touchdowns. Uh, but I'm, I've, I've been all in on Najee and this is like, this is full confirmation bias to me. I I'm drafting Najee with full confidence and I'm drafting him in front of a lot of other running backs. I have him inside of my top 10. Are you right taking now. Najee or I would take, your champion? I would take Najee Harris over Antonio. Gibson. You knew where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I can tell you why. If you owe me a climb inside the recesses of Mike's enormous Ooh, head. Yeah. Uh, Do you you gonna, will get lost. It's going to sound echoey, but Ma let's hear it. <laughs> Mike is more confident in third down snaps for Najee Harris than he is for Antonio Gibson. That is 100% it. Yeah. J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, they split time over the first three drives in the Ravens' second game. Each had four carries. Gus has been in our sleeper category of the UDK for a while, but um, Dobbins Do is a third-round pick. Gus is an 11th-round pick. Yeah, Dobbins is the better player physically, talent-wise. That's why he was drafted higher. You see it on the field. Uh, he's gonna get the, the he's gonna get slightly more work than Gus, uh, for sure. He's gonna end up with more fantasy points, assuming both of them are healthy. But that gap is wild. I don't think that Dobbins is being overdrafted. I just think Gus is being left for dead. Yeah. In the tenth round, where you've got a guy who's gonna touch the ball enough to be fantasy relevant a lot of weeks for the Ravens. Uh, Mark Ingram is out of the way. He's got the touchdown opportunities too. So I I do like Gus Bus as a late round flyer. Gus Bus or James Conner. James Conner. James Conner. He did not look good, by the way. The Arizona Cardinals do not look good. That's fair. Their offense. Three three and outs with Kyler. They, they were missing some offensive line due to COVID protocol as well, which uh, Kyler did not want to. From what I understand, Kyler did not want to play in this game because of the offensive line situation, but basically Cliff forced him to play in this game. Well, he threw he, all the balls away. Play, so. yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're going to make me play? <laughs> Watch this. Why did he spike the ball there? <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't look good at all, but uh, Connor uh, limited amounts of opportunity. I mean, Chase has been the starter to get the handoffs in both preseason games. Yeah. Connor missed one with COVID protocol, though, so still a little too early to declare, you know, some new perspective on the backfield. But, uh, all right, let's talk oh, about... Someone, someone stopped at the station and filled up. See what you did there. The gas man, Miles <laughs> Gaskin. Whoa. We go from the Gus bus to the gas man. Miles Gaskin had himself. I love car jokes. A great. You do. You're a big fan. Um, yeah. Miles Gaskin had yeah. a big. There was a big reaction to him last week. 
It was, you know, it was the Malcolm Brown show. And and then we talked, you know, Jason, you've been really down on Miles Gaskin. You brought him up on the bus episode. And then this last week, you know, there's the possibility you could go the wrong direction, you know, and overreact in a positive way to Miles Gaskin having a couple of touchdowns. And, you know, I loved seeing him involved in the passing game again. So I guess I'll toss to you and say, like, where yeah, do you the, find yourself after two weeks of preseason football with Miles? I find myself where I was before preseason. This is a perfect case of not overreacting. Last week I said I'm the one that can victory lap, but I'm not really doing that. I didn't move Gaskin after last week. It was the expectation that I had is not that Miles Gaskin is terrible. It's not that he's not the starter. It's that this is going to be a backfield that he's not going to have to himself and get 18 touches a game and yada, yada. And and I think even though he, he had the majority uh, of work in this game, you, you saw it, right? I mean, uh, Ahmed was involved. Malcolm Brown was still involved. Brown got a touchdown as well. So um, if the Dolphins' offense really takes that huge leap forward, because Tua has definitely looked good, that's uh, the bigger change for the Dolphins for me. Gaskin is what I thought he was so far before either of these preseason weeks, which is just the primary guy in a timeshare on – a questionable offense, but Tua, Tua has looked pretty good. And, and so I think if you want Gaskin to take a step forward to be a weekly fantasy, uh, you know, locked in starter, that's on Tua. And you're hoping that the offense just gets better. It's not going to come the way that it came last year with 18 touches a game. That's, that's, I'm not overreacting to this one. I'm, I didn't overreact last week. I think, uh, it's a three headed backfield. I still have him inside my top 24. I didn't move him, but uh, I liked what I saw, and I'm with you. I think the offense is interesting. Yeah, I have him at 27, so right right around there. Uh, Javante Williams, thoughts on Javante this preseason? I thought Javante has looked the part. There was um, a very crucial – I can't remember if it was third or fourth down, but monster blitz pickup where Javante you know, tracked it, ran right up the middle, and, and uh, just stonewalled a player. That, and it turned into a huge play for the team. So he looks the part. Melvin Gordon has been dealing with his own injury, which you can read up. Uh, I believe he's on the – is he on the groin index? Ah, groin. I thought he was a groin injury. Look, if you're on the groin index, you know it. Yes. Like, you, you know. 100% of players on the groinindex.com have a groin injury. So that you can't know for sure that Devontae is going to be – I, I don't Did think he he's going to be the, the guy. Goal? Uh no, on the goal line he was he he kind of got stuffed, but then one of his offensive linemen ripped the ball out oh, of his. Oh, that was so cool! So he it, actually took the ball out of his hands. He ripped yes. it out of his hands, and they called it a touchdown. I don't know if that's that was, why you guys were reacting. That I don't way. know if it was a legal maneuver, but it was. I don't it know was how it definitely wouldn't big be. brained. I think yeah, I mean it felt galaxy brain, man. Hold if on, let, let's think about that. What if you what if you had like three guys take the hand off? <laughs> Oh, and just do like a daisy chain, and of, you don't know. What you're making assembly <laughs> line, like three card Monty. I mean, like, <laughs> like you're in a you're in a triad formation, just kind of, and one of them breaks away with the ball. Um, Come yeah. on, it was it was really cool to watch the play, just because it, he's standing funny. in the end zone. Yeah, and he's like, I see that ball; it's <laughs> right there. I could just grab it. And he does. He grabs it. It's like I did this. Is, I scored a touchdown. It was is, is the coach. Happy or upset with that? Because that's a really risky maneuver. Yeah. You're on the goal line and you're ripping the ball away from your own player. I can't imagine you're thrilled, but then he scored the touchdown. It's that was a, I yeah. mean, it was one of my favorite plays I've seen yeah. in a long time. I'm, I wish it was regular season. You're like, I'm proud of you, but don't ever do that again. You think the uh, Houston Texans will pick him up as a running back? <laughs> they Maybe need, make an acquisition. They need more running backs. Um, So. Stay away yeah. from the Houston backfield. I watched Mark Ingram look good relative to what I thought he had, and he scored on the goal line, and then there's Phillip Lindsay, and then there's third down David Johnson, and then there's it's sadness. quarterback yeah. Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, and then there's uh, the uh, non-winning franchise yeah. uh, that scores on average probably 14 points a game. They're no. doing their best to shut down the possibility of fantasy players drafting their players. Like they've spent the off season accumulating a, just too many. Every time we're doing our, our, our family draft and every time the rounds go by and my sons need a wide receiver, I'm like, well, this Brandon Cooks guy is, 
he's all alone and he should get the ball, but well, it's, fun. For, it's, it's like funny. I never know what to do with them. It's I never want to draft them. A little bit of an overreaction, but at the running back, I'm not touching them. A wide receiver, Cooks is fine. And then, like, even in our dynasty league, Chris Conley's on the waiver wire. And he's the opposing starter. So that tells you kind of where the temperature is. Nobody wants to start at Houston Texan. And a lot of the times, we're wrong about those situations. So, I, yeah, that would be what you call a murky backfield. Uh, yes. Very ambiguous. We, I believe that it's Lindsay and Mark Ingram, but that remains to be seen. It's not David Johnson. More than likely, it is not. Go get that number one pick, Houston. Yeah, trust go, the process. Go get them. There is a battle for the backup to Daryl Henderson. Um, Darnell Anderson is not available to back him up, so they're looking at Jake Funk, rookie running back, or Xavier Jones. I think Xavier Jones looked outstanding in the preseason. Um, neither is on the redraft radar for me in any way. Is that where you guys are at? A hundred percent. You, you Los can't, Angeles Rams. You can't draft a uh, an insurance running back. Unless you like, we don't usually draft insurance running backs. You know, th those are guys you pick up as the season goes on. You've got extra roster spots. You pick them up before a Sunday. You're going into the playoffs in the draft season. We don't usually do it. Sometimes we'll do it when there's a a locked in guaranteed known commodity. Like if this guy goes down, then that guy's the backup. But here we think it's Xavier Jones. I would agree with you, Andy. He's look good. It could be Jake Funk, and then you grab Xavier Jones, and then uh, Daryl Henderson goes down. And you're like, yeah, see how smart I was, and then it's not even the guy. Right. All right. Do I get to talk about my biggest? Oh, yes. We got, well, oh, quick, there's another running back yeah, to talk you, about. Well, quickly, mm -hmm. we, we got to talk about the Jets running back situation. Michael Carter was one of Draft Twitter's favorite running backs out of North Carolina. He fell to the fourth round, which was – I mean, it was early in the fourth round, but it was still like this is already a red flag on a player who is uh, undersized and not – and his athletic profile doesn't – like break the charts or anything, but the situation for Michael Carter, who the Jets drafted, it seemed like it could be wide open for him to not not be the guy like, oh, we're getting 65% of the running back touches, but no, be the leader of a platoon of a running back by committee. That's more – that'll be the system that they use. I mean, you have a bunch of San Francisco, uh, Kyle Shanahan, Coach Tree guys who are now leading the Jets – so you're going to see a running back by committee. But Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, those were the guys with the starters yesterday. Michael Carter did play in the game after Zach Wilson was already done, yeah, which is not that's not a great sign. If you're if you're drafting Michael Carter to be at an impact player for your team right away, that's not going to work out. Yeah. And he could by the end overtake but at least through the first 25 percent of the season he's just going to be sitting on your bench and I brought up drafting Tevin Coleman a couple of months ago just for the first few weeks just and like I did it in our mock and I was like oh that felt really stupid yeah I, the hope with Carter <laughs> Maybe it's not and the reason why Carter's ADP is where it was which is RB 35 right now is because of the unknown of whether he could establish himself as the guy you're not interested in Michael Carter the platoon you're interested in Michael Carter the starter for tw you know twenty opportunities a game, right? That's what you're going to need in New York, probably. So, um, yeah, he's, that, he's pretty much off my draft board now. He's one of those players okay. where, w when you were drafting him, it was because of the promise of opportunity of of you know having a giant workload, and that promise is gone. Like he he is not going to go out there and be the lead dog Look, workhorse Jason, back. That's that's over. We we all know that some t promises can be crazy sometimes. <laughs> Nagy, yeah, uh, yeah. Nagy's most recent comments this preseason is that I'm starting to buy the sacrificial lamb theory. <laughs> the Rams, yeah, because they're playing the Rams in Week One, and the newest line from the magician is that Andy Dalton. We need to see him in the regular season. Yeah. It's not fair to just, judge him in the in the preseason. Such a strange thing to say. And Dalton's looked fine. I mean, he, he really has. He's looked pretty good to me. Um, he, he's had a couple splash plays, but for the most part, I feel like he's been bad. Like, to start out, he's three and out, three and out, three and out, and then he gets a good, like, one big, you know, home run play. 
I don't his, know. His efficiency. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. And, and Justin Fields looks great. I mean, for the most part, other than getting lit up and not yeah. sensing that pressure and having his helmet sent to Cancun. But uh, he he's he's looked good to me. And, you know, you've seen the legs. You've seen the escapability in some of these Russell Wilson uh, mm-hmm. rookie year similarities where he um, escapes and gains, you know, 20 yards. At the wide receiver position... I tweeted this morning. <laughs> Jason wants to rejoice, I'm so and, and I guess about this. I guess he should, uh, because he had a read earlier than we did. And Mike might not be in the camp that I'm in. I I tweeted that there are really no good signals right now regarding Jamar Chase in in Cincinnati. Um, I did believe that you know, and and it's still possible that his he'll have a rookie impact this year for fantasy teams. But like everything we teach on this show is to stay water and adjust your opinion. Like everything that fantasy analysts on Twitter do is pronounce a take and stay with it. But that's stupid. Like my opinion has changed on Jamar Chase this off season, just like this show's opinion on Joe Burrow has changed. I mean, in the early parts of the off season, after the acquisition of Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow was in our breakout category on the UDK from early release. About a month ago, we pulled him. And because all the signs, all the things that you wanted to see in camp from Burrow and Chase aren't there right now. And because the draft capital and cost is so high, which is the main reason that this is being brought up, like I haven't taken Jamar Chase in any drafts, any mocks, any real drafts in the fifth round because I love all the other wide receivers more there. And now he's struggling with drops. You have established receivers like you know, T Higgins had a great rookie season. And then you obviously have Tyler Boyd. I just think the risk for Jamar chase having a rugs esque season right now is rising and the cost is too high. So I am, I'm sort of out on Jamar chase. Yeah. Welcome. We we've, we've needed one more because I've been all uh, by myself. I've had to eat all the donuts every single meeting. <laughs> the, the the latest is that it's possible. He still gets a dozen, <laughs> but no one's there to right. eat them with I them. just want, in case people show up, I want to be prepared. Um, the, the latest is that he might end up splitting some time with Auden Tate uh, to start the season even. So this is a guy, it, it's different, right? Like the athletic profile, the combination of the quarterback from college and Burrow, the number five pick, there were a lot of check boxes that said, take your shot. It's just draft cost. If he was going where Devontae Smith is going, then it's like, well, sh- sure, I'm going to take the shot. But right now you're giving up a Tyler Lockett or someone like that that's like uh, not Let me throw one other what. thing in real quick, and then I want Mike's opinion on the whole situation. There are a lot of people that reacted to my tweet like, oh, oh, well, look, B.C. Johnson was getting all the headlines last pre off season before mm-hmm. Justin Jefferson came out and dominated, and – so, Mike, how do you react to what you've seen so far? Two preseason games, camp news. Am I overreacting, taking them off my fifth round board? I don't think you're overreacting to the ADP. And we've, you and I have been in sync. I like Jamar Chase a lot. I like the long term uh, outcomes, or I, I project that he will be an excellent player, a true number one wide receiver in the NFL. I guess. Uh, one thing we haven't focused on enough is the ADP because the fifth round for me, that's the title locket round. And the sixth round to me, that's the Chase Claypool round where I'm I'm taking those players 10 out of 10 times if they are there over Jamar Chase. So I guess a, the Chase discussion hasn't had ADP talked about uh, at the same time enough on this show. And so that that's on us. But I think that by the end of the season, Jamar Chase will have a a fantasy impact and a rookie impact. The the dude hasn't played football in a really long time. He opted out of his last season, uh, and he looks like it. Uh, unfortunately, of COVID. I was and then, hoping yes. he wouldn't look that way. Yeah, we I, the Bengals were <laughs> were really hoping he would not look that way. So the 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 separation is that was what was talked about a few weeks ago. But that's there. He was still getting open in these games, but he looks like a player who is mentally who hasn't yeah. hasn't played in a long time, and now he's not going. And now he's going from have hasn't played in a long time. What he just played was college ball. That's a bigger speed, a much larger speed difference than the pros. So 
him trying to catch up mentally, I think it's going to take some time. So ADP-wise, I'm out. Over the course of the season, I'm still in. Not a lot of good vibes, I'll say, for rookie wideouts right now. Jalen Waddle waddling off the field. Rashad oh, Bateman's hurt. Elijah Moore's hurt. Devontae De Smith, baby. Yeah, Devontae Smith is st still looking good at his ADP. It's, it's funny, though, because even that, that offense, you're like, what do you do? The so. offense has been bad. Oh, man, with that, you want to talk about securing your job. You want to secure your job, put Joe Flacco in the game. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, we need Jalen Hurts so bad, uh, other, other than uh, Deshaun Watson. It's funny. Flacco actually looked pretty darn good the first week. But um, yes, Kadarius just, Tony, as Mike has often said this offseason, is his champion at the rookie wide receiver position, right? That's your You drafted him in your dynasty league. He was that your my guy the other day? I went all in on him. I drafted back up into the end of the second round of our rookie drafts to get him. <laughs> all right. Um, I think we can probably hop into the mailbag. One oh, player I want to bring I, up, though. It's tight end for the Pittsburgh Steelers because two touchdowns deserves a conversation. Pat Fryermuth, number who, one rookie tight end this year, which Jason <laughs> loves to comically say. Um, the truth is, I think both of us had him as the number two behind Pitts. Kyle Pitts yeah. in like offseason scouting and collegiate scouting. He is a very talented tight end who is in a pretty good situation with kind of an unreliable enigma of Eric Ebron in Pittsburgh. With a, with a nasty drop. Yeah, well, that's already. his. I mean, he does one That's his game. calling card, yeah. So Ebron will still, I mean, he had, he was four for 59 on six targets. But Fryermuth looks like a dynasty target. Yeah, no, I. Although, I, <laughs> although Big Ben will be gone. Yeah, that's who I. I hated the landing spot when he was drafted because I loved Fryermuth coming in. And I hated it because right now you're behind Ebron and then Big Ben's going to be gone. So, But keep in mind, when he's catching passes from Aaron Rodgers, that is going to be <laughs> incredible next year. Uh, Are you in on my theory? I'm in, I'm Wait, in my... you have a theory that Aaron Rodgers ends up in Pittsburgh? Yeah, I based it strictly on Mike Tomlin was asked, what are you going to – like the quarterback position, you know, after Ben is gone, what are you going to do? And he said, I've got a plan. And oh, so, and so I just figured that plan will be trade for Aaron Rodgers. The plan can't be Mason Rudolph or Dwayne Haskins. Exactly, and that that was part of my decision making. Um, I know it's not them. If Rodgers arrives, and it's like AFC, NFC. I mean, they're not going to trade him inside the NFC. It's probably more likely that Big Ben has a successful season and then comes back again for another year. What, I mean, then, they could, then my cool Aaron Rodgers theory. Uh, probably. How dare but you? But if uh, the important thing here, guys, I thought about this for a long time. If it happens. Can we say the Muth is loose? Muth? I think we got to go with a Friar Tuck. See, I joke. was uh, oh, oh, a Friar Tuck. I was yeah. I was thinking either Friar Tuck or Father Muth. Oh, Father Muth? Yeah. Well, is, we're going to we're going to have to Father related to the Friar thing. Yeah, isn't that what Friar means? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Someone oh, I, so we got to check. We're googling cuz <laughs> cuz you're a monk. Uh, are all friars? They're not monks, yeah, right? Yeah, friars are monks, aren't they? Uh no, it's a large <laughs> deep container for frying food. Oh, oh <laughs> deep fr air fryer mute. <laughs> I don't know. Th th thank you for doing something in the preseason, Pat, because your name is a, is just unlimited. What we could do here, yeah. How do you, uh, okay, what read it to me? Well, it looks like uh, I I saw that fryer uh, is padre, which is father. So I th I think this I think is yeah. correct. Here. Okay, the only fryer I can think of is the um, from Disney's Robin Hood. <laughs> Well, That's not the not, the, Di not the Disney one. I was oh. thinking of uh, Prince of Thieves. Mm. But yes, he, and he had what, like a lot of beer. Yeah, was, was he? Yeah, uh -huh. was he, he was bring or? he was bringing the a monks. transport of beer. Yeah, yeah. I mean they, they they've they've done it uh, before. We <laughs> we know a lot about. So monks. we'll we'll workshop it. We got a long yeah. time before Aaron Rodgers arrives in Pittsburgh. <laughs> That's right, one year. <laughs> um, before we move on, I do want to throw one other name out. Logan Thomas has moved up my draft board. Um, coming into this offseason, the signing of uh, Curtis Samuel, bringing in Adam Humphreys, it seemed like Mr. Necessary was going to be unnecessary, and he was pretty much destroyed in our rankings. Preseason has really shown, like, he is out there every single snap, and he is running routes a ton. They paid him this year. He is a, going to be a big part of this offense, and I think that— Can I push back a little? Ooh. By all means. No Curtis Samuel this preseason. Fair enough. And Diami Brown looks awesome. Yeah. That being said, those those I think that the wide receiver positions are going to be uh, whoever's on the field. Like Curtis Samuel gets there, he'll probably get more targets than whoever's there now. And Diami Brown's great, but 
Um, I think they're going to use the tight end because they have. They did last year, and they have okay. so far in preseason. The, the yeah, I mean, he, he is, got a uh, really terrible pass targeted to him in the end zone this past weekend. The question is, Jason, so you moved him up, but have you moved him up where you're comfortable that he is the tight end 9 in ADP? The tight end 9 in ADP, I, I think you could take your shot around there if you want. If you wanted to tell me that... Goddard or Logan Thomas right now? I have them back-to-back -back in my rankings, and I would take... <laughs> guess I'd take Goddard, but I see them very similar. Robert Tunyon or Logan Tunyon. Thomas? And Tunyon is ADP currently Irv after Logan. Smith. Irv Smith or, or Logan? Logan. Okay. Let's do a couple mailbag questions. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh. If you have a question for the show, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Question number one, Steel City in Pittsburgh writes in. He says, would you recommend drafting Chuba Hubbard in the 15th round if you drafted CMC? PPR, redraft league. I have no – in the 15th, I have no problem with this. Jason was kind of alluding to it that in the draft process, you often do not know who your your back, your true backup, your true insurance running back is. But I think we've seen enough from the Panthers' usage of Chuba in the preseason that if – McCaffrey is missing time. I think they they would use Chuba the same way that they used Mike Davis last year, so he would become incredibly valuable. If you're the kind of person that drafts insurance running backs, then fine. It's nice to know. But it's like in the 15th, that's a really, yeah, really I, deep roster. I, right. I'd rather just play around with those roster spots on upside players at this point than to roster an injury only. That's just philosophically what I would sure. do. I would rather be taking a shot on a breakout player, so like me, Elijah Moore or something. Let me ask you. He's not going to be there in the 15th. No, 15th though. round, let me give you some names. So, like Rashad Penny, Ramondre Stevenson, would you want to take the shot that one of those two guys no. has a bigger role? No, I'd probably grab my insurance if it was between those three players. Damian Williams? No. Keep okay, going. Those, those are the running backs in, okay. in that range. Marlon Mack. Why don't you read me some upside players that you could grab at the 15th that have <laughs> like – like uh, Okay, Marquez Call Callaway. Yeah, I'd probably see what happens in week one with him. I, I would rather draft Callaway. And then Valdez Scantling got a Green Bay is probably there in the 15th. Mm, yeah, I'd probably take my insurance. So, would, I mean, maybe. Xavier Jones? No. Okay, Chuba. well, there you go. Yeah, all right. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, Dan in the UK writes in. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> says, hi, guys. I love the show from across the pond. I wanted to ask you if you take into account schedules and strength of offensive lines when doing your rankings. We... Um, Oh, and he also <laughs> asked, we, we usually get over 80,000 people at uh, Wembley Stadium. Would you consider a London show in the future? Uh, Dan, if you can promise 80,000, I'll, I'll go I mean, do it from the field. What's your overflow policy? Like, I feel like if we go to Wembley, 80,000. Not enough? It won't be large enough. And that could get dangerous. You don't yeah. want a, one of those crushes. Right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of standing room only situations yeah, there. So if you can only hold 80. For for that reason, until you upgrade the actual capacity the to, venue? to a real stadium, put the, you 100K this, and then maybe we'll right. fly over. That's for those a good reasons, point. Shark Tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the real question. What was the question? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I'd love to do a show in London. That'd be amazing. Uh, do you take into account schedules and strength of offensive lines when doing your rankings? I mean, certainly we, we take into account schedule when you're drafting a defense or a streaming quarterback to start the year. And obviously when we do our rankings throughout the season, these things factor in uh, a lot. Uh, your schedule is going to be massive, your matchups and all of that. When you're talking about draft season rankings, Obviously, we do factor in offensive line. We consider that with guys who have a great one or a terrible one. You don't really factor it in with the middle of the pack. It's really the outliers that are going to make the big difference. Um, and and I don't really take too much. To be honest, I don't go too wild with strength of schedule in draft rankings. Andy is and Andy's lost over it. here. I have no idea what's going on. I We're going to close this out with this next question, but I'm just shaking my head and laughing at it. Jason, your answer was great, but I was distracted by this question. Okay. Kevin in Denver writes in with an important title mm. called Highly Suspicious. He suspicious. says, hey, footballers, I'm suspicious that the commissioner may secretly be playing as a manager of a second team in our league. <laughs> 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 We've never met the other manager, and there have been multiple incidents that came across as highly suspicious. The commissioner is a friend of mine. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
how oh, to approach man. him about it. Oh. I, do you see why I was laughing? I need to know what the suspicious transactions are. Are, are these two teams just trading all, all the time? How would you, What would make you suspicious other than... Yeah, I mean, um, I, multiple incidents, so it has to be trades. There, There's a bad person here. You just don't know if it's you or the commissioner. <laughs> okay, because... Yeah, you may need to look in the you, mirror. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one of the two is at fault here because either this is true and shame on that person, and you got to call them out. There's only one way to find out. You got to face-to-face, IRL, say, hey, brother, I love you. I got to ask you, man, are you team 11? Are you, are you team? Or, and then when, it, when you find out, no, that's, and then he shows you pictures of him with, you know, his buddy or whatever. With Schmandy? Uh, with, <laughs> with Schmandy Molloway. <laughs> um, you got to look in the mirror and say, I, 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 I saw those transactions and I felt like he won. And so I could only assume can't you try that to, he was transacting with himself. Can't you try to bait him into a phone call or a Zoom call? Like, I've got a oh. trade offer. That is so good, but I want to I want to lock it in on Zoom. Or do a league a league wide Zoom meetup. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll just say they can't make it. But I think you you back them into a corner where they have to zoom with you, but then you're gonna get someone just it's just gonna be shadow face and it's gonna be all hello, just Hello. Yeah, <laughs> I, greetings. I don't like that trade off. It's mega mind. Like how can you Trying to think of a way that you could mole. I'm not locking it. Just offer him, you know, real nice trade, but you got to lock it in on on, on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, and then another guy shows up on Zoom, and you're like, oh no, right? Well, that's what you get for thinking bad about your friend, the commissioner. But is it thinking bad? I mean, yes, you're 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 thinking that your friend is colluding with himself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's 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 pretty bad. Just uh, keep private do, investigator is the answer to the do, question. Do Hire a, one. Do a weekly Zoom meetup for your league and see if he misses every single week. And then say, hey, I want to make sure we could schedule one where he could get on. And then uh, see what happens. Oh, it's funny. Um, or do nothing and then just be suspicious for years. Don't be suspicious. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> Don't be, be suspicious. suspicious. Don't be. All right. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Mike Evans signed jersey up there right now. Antonio Gibson signed jersey. John U. Smith, who I'm warming on in fantasy uh sign logo football up there on pristine auction hundreds of daily sports auctions use the code baller and uh, use the code ballers. ballers ballers i don't know if baller works but ballers definitely give you 10 bucks baller is only one dollar because it's single oh that makes sense you get a one dollar credit with we the should code get baller. Them to- so if you just put the s you'll get nine extra dollars of credit hmm I, if if we had them activate baller for one dollar that would get used and they'd be like oh, this is not a great deal <laughs> Uh, but yeah, use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit. Big time shows this week. Breakouts, sleepers, busts, values, mock draft, oh. all happening this week. Oh. You oh. don't want to miss a show. Megalobowl.com, get in there, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.